With tower defense games becoming more and more popular on Roblox, new games are coming out left and right as developers try to capitalize on this new market. Regardless of their quality, these games more or less tend to die out. This is due to the immense work it takes to pump out frequent updates, and because of how competitive Roblox is, games are expected to release monthly or even weekly updates. To keep up with these demands, some games have adopted extremely predatory means of monetization, exploring their fans through gambling, manipulation, and more. In this video, I'm going to be exposing some of the scummy methods that the most popular tower defense games on Roblox commonly use and how you should avoid them. Starting off, we're going to be taking a look at the current most popular tower defense game on Roblox, All-Star Tower Defense. In this game, the towers all represent different popular anime characters such as Naruto, Luffy from One Piece, and Deku from My Hero Academia. These towers all have unique attacks and abilities, and I'm not going to lie, the animation is pretty solid. It's clear that a lot of effort has been put into these towers, and I can definitely see how people enjoy playing this game. However, in order to get these cool and special towers, the player has to gamble. That's right, the towers in this game are all obtained through a loot box system, forcing players to spend currency for a chance to unlock the tower they want. In this game, towers have different rarities and are ranked by the number of stars they have. Towers range from weak 1 star units to powerful 7 star towers. Why this matters is that in every single case, the 7 star towers are so much better than the 1 star units. For example, a 1 star Humble Swordsman 2 costs 500 cash to place and has a DPS of 833.33. In comparison, a 7 star Awoken Humble Swordsman costs 1000 cash to place and has a DPS of 5428.57 when accounting for its damage over time. That is ridiculously better value and makes a 1 star tower entirely useless. The rarer and harder to get version is objectively better, so essentially, all star tower defense isn't a strategy game and rather a game solely revolving around who can grind for the best towers. This is not how a tower defense game is meant to be played. For comparison, let's take a look at BTD6, arguably one of the most popular the tower defense games on the market. Each and every one of the 23 unique towers are balanced to be a similar level of strength and have their own purpose. This makes the game fun and strategic as you figure out combinations of towers to beat each game mode. Meanwhile, in ASTD, how good you are is solely reliant on what towers you have. Because of that, there's a strong desire amongst players to get the most powerful towers. But how much would one player have to spend on average if they want the 7 star tower I previously mentioned? When the Humble Swordsman 2 was available, you had a 2.5% chance to obtain it. That means on average, you would have to spend 150 Stardust when considering the free 10 spins you get every 3 multi-spins. To get that much Stardust, you'd have to spend 1,830 Robux in the shop. You then have to go through the expensive process of evolving into 7 stars, which requires 11,250 gems and 2,200 coins worth of towers. To get that amount of gems, if you're purchasing 500 at a time, which is the amount you need to purchase if you want to summon 10 times, it will cost you a total of 5,625 Robux. Adding that to the price of the Stardust, you get a total of 7,455 Robux. If you have premium, that's $74.55 worth of Robux, but without premium, you're spending an insane $93.19. That means you're spending on average nearly $100 to get a single tower. The worst part is, you could very well end up spending several hundreds more, as you're not even guaranteed to get the tower at these odds. If you've already wasted $100 and weren't lucky enough to get it, it can be difficult to give up. Players are more likely to keep spending until they get the tower, so they don't have to feel like all their money was wasted. You might be thinking to yourself, who's dumb enough to spend over $100 on a single tower? Well, with the player base of this game mainly consisting of young children, these players don't understand the value of money. 20 30 or even $100 doesn't seem like anything to them, and the idea of getting the tower they want is exciting, so they cry and beg their parents for their credit card, eventually falling victim for this trick. Games like this are promoting genuine gambling addictions, which could lead to a multitude of problems in the future lives of these players. An addiction like this could spiral into other things once they get older, like lotteries, casinos, or more. A gambling addiction is incredibly serious, and an estimated 2-4 to four million adults have reported to have this condition. From a business standpoint, it makes sense to do this. This game is making a ridiculous amount of money by taking advantage of the naivety and foolishness of children. And while we can't see the actual amount of Robux this game is getting, we can assume it gets a good amount as the game receives frequent updates. This is one of the main reasons the game is so popular. Because of the income it generates, the developers are able to pay for a large team that is capable of pushing out updates almost weekly. This boosts player count significantly and in return makes the game even more money. For a game like TDS, which is currently the second most popular tower defense game on Roblox, due to the fact that they don't make money for gambling, updates release much less often. The game has been receiving small updates every 1-2 to two months, consisting of skin crates or balance changes to towers. This is much less exciting than the brand new towers that ASTD often receives. It has been nearly 300 days since TDS introduced a new tower, which was the Warden that came out in Halloween last year. 
This has majorly affected the player count at TDS, and this is why so many other tower defense games use greedy and scummy methods to make money. Without a large income, it's simply really difficult for a tower defense game to thrive. While I've only talked about ASTD, this is definitely not the only game that has predatory forms of monetization. Before it got taken down for copyright reasons, a skibbity toilet tower defense game was absolutely killing it, having over 100,000 concurrent players. This game had pretty much the same gambling system as ASTD, but worse. To get the rarest class of tower, which was mythical, you had a 0.1% chance of getting one from the crate. Each time you wanted to spin for a tower, it cost 100 coins or 900 coins for 10 spins. That means on average, you would have to spend 90,000 coins, which would cost at least, with the best value packs, 11,245 Robux. That's $112.46 with premium and $140.57 without premium. That's absolutely ridiculous and unlike ASTD, the towers in this game suck. They had hardly any animation and there was almost no effort put into them. Unfortunately, the sad reality is that these games aren't going anywhere. ASTD has been out for 3 years and gambling slash loot craze systems are commonplace all across Roblox. Pet Simulator X is one of the most popular games on the website and gambling for pets is the entire point of the game. The truth of the matter is that Roblox itself profits from these scummy methods as they take 70% of all profits made on any game. Because of that, Roblox has no incentive to take down these games or enforce rules against gambling. Everything, and I mean everything, revolves around money. If you want to help stop games like this from existing, there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, don't play them. This is obvious, but by playing these games, you're supporting their player count, which helps boost them up on the Roblox Discover page. Entirely avoiding the game is by far the best option. However, if you really enjoy the game and don't want to quit playing, you can also just not spend any Robux on the game. As I mentioned before, money is everything, and if their income starts to reduce, the devs will notice that. Maybe by giving them a cut in their paycheck, the owners of these games will start to implement less scummy methods of monetization. If you could instead purchase the towers without having to gamble for them, it would be a lot less manipulative and harmful for its players. However, I doubt that's ever going to happen. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to raise some awareness about this issue and give my opinion on it. If you guys enjoy this style of video, let me know in the comments down below. My content is usually just based around TDS, so I wanted to try and experimenting a bit. Also, I feel like this is something that wasn't covered that much on YouTube, so I wanted to raise some awareness about this issue. And before I end this video, I'd like to thank CIA Agent Mert, Guest, Insane Catalupe, You May Never Know, Zadul, Adam, Leafhead23, Stay Hydrated, Shumbus, Sir Lag, Mr. Autistic Man, Mr. Giggles, Sniper Mask, Grow, Dad, Potted Sprout, Elixir US, Solox, Duolingo is Coming, Nimbus the Wicker, The Figure, and Jonjo684 who supported my content by becoming a channel member. If you'd like to help me out and get some special perks in the meantime, like being my friend on Roblox, consider becoming a channel member today. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Blue Head Mafia. My name is Corso, and I'll see y'all in the next video.